place we're not allowed to reveal in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Wow, you're bad. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. If you're going to need it, it's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. Thank you for tuning in. Wide open telephones on this Friday. This just in. Well, first of all, uh, the first of the two baseball playoff games is done. The Dodgers losing to the Philadelphia Phillies 8-5 to in Game 2 of the Best of Seven Series. Uh, game 3 is Sunday at Dodger Stadium here in Los Angeles. The Dodgers coming back to L.A. down two games to none. I know a lot of you out there, <laughs> a lot of you out there watching that game. No doubt you are pissed off. And uh, also, this just it, a uh, state legislative panel in Alaska has concluded that Sarah Palin abused her power in the firing of the state's public safety commissioner. The investigative report concludes that a family grudge wasn't the sole reason for firing public safety commissioner Walter Monaghan, but says it was likely a contributing factor. Republican State Senator Gary Stevens said, I think there are some problems with this report. I would encourage people to be very cautious to look at this with a jaundiced eye. So, there you go. Sarah Palin abused her power. This just in. 1-800-5-800-TOM. It's wide open telephone to the Tom Like Your Show. one 800 5 Let's go to Bill on the Tom Like Your Show. Hello, Bill. Tom, how's it hanging? Uh, hanging right as usual, Pill. <laughs> as you should know. Cool, man. I just want to let you know I just saw a bumper sticker right now. What did it say? It said, Dick plus Bush equals screwed. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, <laughs> what do you think, brother? I'm pretty good. Was that on your car or somebody else's? Somebody else's. I was checking. I think we should need to get more of those. Maybe so. <laughs> Just wanted to pass that along to you. Thank you for that. <laughs> Appreciate that. Take me, take me out with a big old fart, Tom. <laughs> Here you go, Bill. <laughs> there goes Bill. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. It's Andrea. A wide open telephone. Hello. Hi, Tom. I'm just calling to get some advice from you. Sure. Well, you see, i kind of been seeing this black guy for, like, about a year now. And he only seems to want to see me after midnight when he's hanging out with his buddies. And I was just wondering, like, what the deal is. You know, he tells me he loves me. He wants to be with me. He wants to hang out. He enjoys hanging out with me. But, like I said, he only seems to call me after midnight. What do you think that tells you? That I'm a scooter. <laughs> You 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 are his booty call. Yeah, but I mean, like, I don't understand why he needs to tell me why he tells me he loves me when all he wants to do is phone. Like, I'm cool with that. Like, well, yeah, why don't you, have you told him that? Yeah, I have. I'm, I I actually just talked to him about half an hour ago and told him like, if that's all he wants to do, that's cool with me. Like, I don't mind that. But why does he need to tell me like he said he loves me? I don't understand. Wow. Well, uh, you know, as uh, long as you're getting what you need, what do you care what he says? Uh, well, that's the thing. Like, if he if he's telling you he loves me, like, I don't know. I guess I just want it. I, I he want loves he to... loves banging you. That's what he loves. Yeah, that's cool. I love banging him too. But right? why does he need to what in, why does he need to put a front up? Well, you, know? you already told him that. So as long as you're getting what you need, why even question it? It'd be one, it would be one thing if you were a fool and you believed he loved you. 
Well, see, that's the thing. Like, I totally do believe that. I guess that's my problem. You believe he loves you? You know what? I, I'm actually not even sure about that anymore. I just told you, he loves banging you. That's what I'm saying. That's cool. I love banging him, too, but I don't but understand. But that's what like... he loves. He doesn't love you. I guess. He loves banging you. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. All right, Tom, can you take me out one night stand style? What would that be? That's Kobe followed by Dino Dancing Machine. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can do that. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. You know, you are the biggest asshole I've ever met in my entire life. Your like is one on one sh is completely retarded. Okay, you just got lucky, hun. Let me tell you, it will never happen again. You are such a piece of sh I didn't know what this Tom like is. I'm so cool, and these are my rules. That's such bull. Ha! One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Kristen on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. Hi, Kristen. Uh, I love your um, <laughs> um, listening to you on the radio. I'm a little nervous because I never did this before. But I'm calling that's what for every, my son. That's what all the women say to me, dear. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm calling about my son's uh, girlfriend. Yeah. Um, she has joined the Navy. Um and um, anyway, she's um, before she joined the Navy, they've been together for two years, and um, he lost his virginity to her. You know, we're real close, and we talk about everything. So your son is what, um, about 19 or 20 years old? He's actually, he just made 19. And, okay. Uh, yeah. And he's really in love with the girl, but um, she was the first four months of her being there, she was calling like crazy. The last two months, she stopped. <laughs> and, you know, I started to question it and ask him what was going on, how come she's not calling like she was at first. And um, he called her, and she always had an excuse, oh, we're too busy, we're busy in the Navy, you know, we're doing a lot of, you know, things. But, you know, we got, um, you know, other people telling us that on weekends they have free days. But um, anyway, uh, we believe she's cheating. <laughs> Do you have any proof? Uh huh. Do you have any proof? Uh, well, he did find, um, well, he went through her things. She left her things here in my house. Uh, and by the way, she left to go to... Wait, she so, so she lives in your house? No, actually, you know, she, um, she just got back, you know. Um, Why is she at your house? Um, well, I allowed it, um, because, you know, we have this relationship where I trust my son and, you know, and I trust her and, you know, they, you know, not trying to make any children. Um, but, you know, we, we have that type of relationship. Um, and I'd rather for him to be here than to be somewhere out there on the street, you know, so many things going on. But um, anyway, she stayed here one night. <laughs> and She left the, her things. Yeah, she left her things. Um, she went to Vegas with her family, she says. Right. And so he's walking around here depressed, pacing back and forth, you know, and he, you know, he doesn't know what to do. But anyway, we went to do her things and we found, you know, like, things from, you know, hotel hotel receipts. And, um, you know, we even went as far as to call the hotel, and they said, yeah, she did check in, and she te checked in with someone, but they couldn't tell us, you know, if it, you know, who it was. They probably didn't know. Yeah, they didn't know. You know, the day, the, 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 if, uh, 50 years ago when you were checking to a hotel, everybody was going to the room had to sign in. They don't do that anymore. Whoever put their name on the credit card, that's that. That's the name they know. They don't know the name of the other person. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. But we know she was at the hotel the night before she got here. 
and then she um, didn't want to, um, I guess, do things with him. And, you know, you've been gone, you know, um, six months, and, you know, you would think, you know, she missed him, but uh, it seems like she's already been fulfilled. <laughs> with <me. laughs> oh, boy. So, so, Kristen, do you have a question about this? Um, well, I just want um, some advice from you because um, I listen to, you know, your show all the time and, you know, and I think you give really good advice and, you know, and he got me listening to you every day. I, you know, I pick the kids up from school and, um, you know, he doesn't have a father figure. He's going to school. Well, he's and well step one, if he's a listener, he shouldn't have a girlfriend. Yeah, uh, that's what I told him. <laughs> I say, yeah, you listen to his show, you should take his advice, you know. But yeah. uh, you know, it goes in one ear and out the other. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, but uh, well, that's, he, he should be following that. I'll tell you what, no girlfriend, and then he wouldn't have this problem. Yeah, yeah, that's true. He, I feel like he's too young, you know. And uh, but he's he says he's in love. <laughs> well, <laughs> he's going to be very very hurt when this is all over. Brandon, what did you want to say to Kristen? Hey Tom, uh, long time listener, first time caller. Cool. Uh, um, hey, I was in the Navy. I'm uh, still in the Navy Reserves. I can tell her that uh, she needs to drop this girl because she's messing around. Uh, any new girl, or any new chick that came in the Navy, man, was fresh meat for us, and we kind of. Uh -huh. We kind of preyed on these girls, so advice to him, drop her as soon as possible. Okay, I will tell him that. <laughs> Which is what I just said, of course. Yes. Oh. And, and you know the deal, Kristen, that's, uh, the, I think the guys who listen pretty much know that's the deal. And your son knows that too, by the way. Mm -hmm. he, he needs to be dating various women, because at this age... Women cannot commit to a guy. They can't and won't. And why should a guy be committed? He should be having all the experience and all the fun he can get. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, if his dad was around, he'd probably kick his ass. <laughs> yeah. And he needs to true. have his ass kicked, I think. Uh, John, what do you want to say to Kristen? Uh, just her son needs to DTB, man. Get her out of there. He's 19. Yep. <laughs> if your son listens to, to Father Lankis here, uh, he wouldn't be in a relationship at 19. Yeah, that's true. Um, I'm trying to tell him that, but um, he's depressed. He's been crying. I can't. Um, I don't know how to help him. I don't know how to talk to him. You know, I'm a woman. He's a man, and can't get him to understand that. <laughs> you got him back <laughs> in space. Anyways, hey, Tom, can you uh, blow me up? Of course I can. So you get the idea, right, Kristen? Yes, you gotta, I get the idea. you got to get him to break up with her and forget about her and move on because otherwise he's going to be very, very hurt. Okay. He's listening now. <laughs> I hope so. Okay. Because that's what I would tell him. Okay, I sure will. All right, Kristen. Okay, take me out, Kobe style. <laughs> All right, Kristen, here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. You're a beast in my heart. Oh. You're there, I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. 1-800-599-5555. Oh. 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 That's our telephone number. Robert on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how's it going? First time, long time. It's going great. Sweet, man. Uh, well, here's the thing, bro. I needed some advice. Um, all right, so I've been banging this chick now for about, oh, it's a month and a half. Like, no strings attached, you know, just straight booty call. It's pretty awesome. But um, being here is, like, terrified of having a kid, man. You know, I'm trying to follow the Tom Micah's rules, you know, but it's just... I mean, I got well, why, so if you're following my rules, you're banging three or four chicks at the same time, right? Oh, right, right, right. But this one's like a specific one, you know. The no, there are, there are no specific ones, no uh, f better than the other ones. No, 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 no. The most frequent one? How about that? No, nah, shouldn't be. Well, that's how it is right now with that one. And, now, uh, that's, a pro that's your problem. That's, that's a big problem right there, but go ahead. All right, well, I'll, I'll keep that in mind, and I'll, I'll, I'll do, you know, as, as the boss says. But, uh, 
Well, anyways, uh, yeah, I've been bruising trouble. I'm still terrified, man. I mean... About her kid, you know, that's like, well, uh, uh, pal, know. when you tell me you have her on birth control, yeah, that can end at any that. time she decides to end it, including tonight. Right, right. Well, and is that so? What you just told us all is that you don't use condoms. No, I do. I do. But one hundred percent of the time. One hundred percent of the time. Yeah, one hundred percent of the time. I'm telling you, I'm terrified of having a kid. It's like, right. like my worst nightmare. Like, All right. I've been too many close calls, and it's the worst feeling that guy could ever have. So, right. you lose control. But, anyways, um, so I told you, you know, you know, I'm out of here. You know, like, just, like, I don't, you know, kind of like, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't trust a girl's birth control. You know, it's like the last thing. You know, you never trust a girl. She's like, right. I don't want to you don't. You just don't do that. So, what is your question? Well, I told her about that. You know, like, I don't trust you with this, this and this. And she finally says, "Well, what if I sign like a contract saying I'll get an abortion?" Now, I thought about that, and I was like... Not enforceable. Well, you know Forget it. Not enforceable. It's not, huh? She could write a contract, and then she could go out and get pregnant, and you could sue her, and the judge would throw it out. Wow. Yeah, that was my question, if it would even hold up. No. Uh, sweet. Well, that answers my question. I don't think so long, man. <laughs> uh, I'm here to help. Tom Likas. The Tom Likas Show. And more calls than ever at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's John on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Great. Hey, I'm calling about something that happened last night. Uh, I had a little accident with my, uh, my, uh, she's not my girl. She's just my, uh, you know, uh, friends with benefit. And we had a little accident last night, so. What, what was the, a wait, wait, wait. What was the accident? Uh, uh, you could say the dam broke on it. What broke? The dam broke and the, the river started flooding. You're saying your condom broke? Yes, in other words, yes. yes and were, was she using birth control? Uh, no, not at all. Well, why were you having sex with someone who doesn't use birth control? Uh, because I'm a moron. Yeah, because uh, women who don't use birth control want to have babies. Well, here's, here's the thing, though, Tom. I, I haven't mentioned that she's uh, she's kind of she's to get, she's with a guy. What do you mean she's with a guy? She's with someone else, and, and she's like my old high school buddy, and we, we still, you know, we still we're, we're still we still have contact. So you know, once in a while, here and there, we go out, and last night was the case. So uh, what happened was that that happened, the condom rip, and I'm today I'm trying to get her to. Go to the clinic and get make her take the. Morning and did she tell you why she doesn't want to do it? Because she says she should. Uh, she's not going to get pregnant, but you know how the hell she's going to know. No, she did. She doesn't want to take it because she wants to have a baby, and that's why she wasn't using birth control either. Man, <laughs> look, look, Tom, man, I'm screwed here. Uh, I started listening to you recently, about a couple of months ago, and I mean, if I had your advice, you know. Uh, you know, uh, I would have followed it. <laughs> well, I've been giving the advice here, John. Where have you been? Uh, on other radio stations. <laughs> yeah, then, that, then you get what you paid for. <laughs> hey, uh, just so I, just, by the way, just, by the way, I want to know uh, what station do guys who knock up their girls listen to? What station was that? Uh, you could say uh, K Rock. <laughs> You're listening to K Rock, okay? Yeah, yeah I, would... <laughs> I don't know. It's wanted to find out. So then you decided to start tuning over here when you realized you were screwed. Yes, sir. Okay. You know what they recommended me to you uh, over at my job, and uh, I started listening to you. And you know, you have you got pretty good advice. You know, I I, I enjoy your topics, and you know, it's uh, it's amazing stuff. Uh, so either way, I, I'm telling you, I'm worried right now. I'm, I'm nervous. And I don't know what to do. Well, there's nothing you can do until you find out if she has her period, John. Hopefully, yeah, that's, a, that's, that's what I'm praying. <laughs> right, but uh, John, come on. If they, don't, if they don't use birth control, you can't have sex with them. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You can't yeah. have sex with them. If they don't use birth control, it means they want to have a baby. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I guess we learn things the hard way, right? This, <laughs> that's why they don't use birth control. <laughs> All right, the time, you know, uh, can you take me out Kobe style? Yes, I can, John. Here you go. Oh. Oh. 
This is about us. She's so special to me. Give me a beat to my heart. Give me the air I breathe. She's so special to me. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Bill on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. Hello, Bill. I've been waiting since 2003 to say that. I've been a loyal listener. And here we are. A little nervous, but I'll get through it. Um, hey, I've, so I've been listening for, for a while, and oh my God, I just forgot your engineer's name. Dude, that's the whole reason I called. You talking about forget. Art? Yeah, thank you. Because I'm so nervous. I got nervous and I forgot his name. Uh, um, Art. Okay, you, you guys had Brett. Now you have Art. And the, what, the year and a half that you've had Art, the show is completely different. Like, the topics are the same, but the dynamic of the show is different. You guys are more fun. You joke around. You have the rest, like, the other three guys involved. And, and I love it. Like... Uh, can you give me some insight? How do, do you think it's different than well, it was a year and a half well, ago? Well, two things happened, okay, and and that's definitely one of them, is that Art came in as our engineer. The other is that when we switched over from working for Westwood One, now 30 cents a share, uh, <laughs> to uh, CBS... I'm buying. I'm going to go buy right now. <laughs> when we moved over to CBS, uh, we have a different studio now mm-hmm. on, a, on a movie lot we're not allowed to mention. Right. But um, when we moved here, uh, we have a studio where we're all in the same room except for Dean. Oh, dude, it's made a, it's made the show, like, little a little difference like that's made the show so much better. Absolutely. Hey, one more question, one more question. Um, what, are you, what are you doing tonight? What do you got going on? What do I have going on? Yeah, like, I, I want to know what you do. Like, what are you doing tonight? I'm doing a good crack a lacka coming up here in a little while. Blow me up, blow me up, baby. Here you go. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Let's say hello to uh, Mario on the Tom Likas show. Yo, Tom, what's going on, Daddy? How you doing? Doing okay, Mario. The show. Thank you. I just had a quick question. Uh, I wanted to go in with a couple buddies and buy a house. Uh, either to live in or to rent. What do you think about that? Well, first of all, if you think that uh, you're going to be a big-time real estate mogul or an investor and you're going to make big money, forget it. Or get it. Yeah, I wasn't... I mean, I wasn't really going... What, what is the purpose of buying a house with three of your friends? I've always listened to your show, and you've always said 20% or more down. And right now the market's low, and... I don't have that kind of cash to put that much money down, but three of us together could put at least 30% down. Well, whatever you do, make sure an attorney looks at it. Yeah. And that doesn't just mean for the the four of you. Then you have to have an attorney of your own look at it. Okay. And uh, and uh, you have to think ahead. What happens if you have to sell the house and the market's down another 20%? Um, that's why I'm calling. I don't know. I was just trying to figure out a way because I right now I don't see myself in the next three years, four years, having enough money to put twenty five, thirty percent down on a house. So I figured if we could do a yeah, but don't be owning a house. Ju- what is the reason you want to own a house, even a quarter of a house? What for? What reason? Uh, the market's low, and I figured it'd be a good time to get into it. I keep I'll- telling you, there is this is not a good investment. So just- not a good investment. You are not in the real estate business. You don't understand how it works. No, I- people who know the business are are getting torched out of the business. You don't know. It the is- only reason to buy a house is so you can live in it I- for a minimum of five years. Even uh, a rent pretty maybe or like a duplex or something. No, the that only you- again. The only, you don't know anything about that business, do you? No, I don't. That's why I'm. Uh, why calling. would you invest all the money you have in a business you know nothing about? That's a you know, that's a good question. There, I've I've just wanted to get in why the market was. You know, but why you I, don't know anything about it. I don't. That's, you know, I'm just calling to. Uh, it doesn't to matter how low the market has gone. 
You don't know about renting a house. What do you know about that? Well, I mean, I know more than my landlord, that's for sure. Not necessarily. Yeah. Your landlord has a tenant. Yeah, that, I don't think that's going to be hard to find. Oh, well, but... Why do you say that? Are you an expert in real estate? No, but I... Why are there so many signs around town that say now renting, if, if that's true? Or a lot of for sale signs, too. Why are there so many buildings that say now renting? If what you're saying is there's no problem finding tenants, why do so many buildings say now renting on them? Uh, I don't know. I'm just... Uh, yeah, that's I'm... my point. Listen to what I'm telling you. I'm telling you you're wrong. If you think it's easy to find tenants, explain to me why so many apartment buildings have empty apartments. And I was asking your advice on if it was I, good. I, I, you're not listening to me. I said it's not a good idea. I know, and I heard that. And I'm telling you. When that is it time to buy if I know I'm I just said house? to you there is never a good time Put it this way. The only reason to buy a house is so you can live in it. So, not to make a profit. Not to be a landlord. The only reason is that you want to live in a particular location for at least the next five years. Okay, what if what if that happened? Would that, that idea is that is real estate a good investment then after all or no? First of all, it's a better investment when you're doing it by yourself. Because at any time, one of your partners could decide they don't want to be in the arrangement anymore. And what are you going to do then? You don't even know. Uh, Let's say one of your three friends said, I can't afford this anymore. I want my money back. What would you do? Sell the house? Would you have to pay more to buy his interest out? Would you have that money? You haven't even thought about this. True. You don't know what you're doing. You are really living on the edge. I'm not. At your age, in your financial condition, you are better off renting and putting away money until you can afford to buy your own house. A house where you plan to live for a minimum of five years. All right. And not a penny on anything else before that. Cool. That's all I've been like. Because I'm here. telling you, one of your friends all did the same thing you did. They put their last $40,000, $20,000, whatever, into buying this house. And what would happen if one or two or all of them said, we can't avoid this anymore? What happens then? Think about this angle. What happens if it happens after the market drops another 10, 15, 20%? Is, uh, how long do you think of when is the market going to... Nope. If gonna... anybody knew, somebody would be doing something about it. And you know the last person to know? You. You know nothing. Uh, what do you know about the market? When is it going uh, to... How many gonna... houses... Uh, let's start with this. How many houses have you owned? Uh, okay, when do you think the have you gonna... Have you ever owned a house? That's why I'm calling you. Right. Your opinion. Ever rented a house to somebody else? I've done all these things. No, I, that's calling you to What ask. I'm telling you is what's happening is unprecedented. That since the Great Depression, we have not had times this bad. Therefore, it's impossible to know. It is my best guess that it will take the real estate market years to recover. Okay. So, years more than your attention span or your friend's attention span. Uh, like it. Of recovery plus or what? what you, I mean, dude, are you, are you listening to me? Just, just live in your own apartment. Put money away until you have twenty to twenty-five percent down on a house you're gonna buy and live in yourself. Okay, I heard you say that the first time. So, what more do you need? Okay. What? what are you, how long? You're the expert here. How long you think it's gonna? I just uh, told you. you it, it's hard to be the expert. You have to read back on previous situations like the one you're in, and then base your opinion on that. Are you aware we haven't had anything like this since the Great Depression? Yes. So there's no way to know. I, My prediction is that it will take years for the market to recover. 
years. That's okay. That's uh, good. several years and more. By the time the market recovers, you'll be bored with that house and begging to get out. Or you'll have, one of you will have a girlfriend or a wife or something, and then you'll want to get out. Okay, that's a good point. And then you're going to be one, somebody's going to be stuck with what remains, and the others are, or one's going to get out, the others will be stuck. This is a bad idea. That's all I can say. It's bad all the way around. That's I just wanted your opinion. Uh, you know, thanks you, for then you've got it. One eight hundred like this. Five eight hundred. Like this. Like this. Eight six six. Tom like this. Like this. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. The Tom like his show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show of 1-800-5800-TOM. Wide open telephones here. Anything goes. We're taking them faster than ever. More of them than ever. JT, hello. Hi, this is JT. How you doing? Doing okay? You got the radio or something turned up there, JT? You got to turn it off. I got it. Got it. Got it. Um, yeah, I just uh, got a question. Got a, my, my house. I'm upside down about 300K in it. Probably like everybody else in Southern California. And a big, big white elephant on my back. I've already done load mods with the bank, lowered the payment down a little bit, but I'm still, you know, over 4K a month coming out just for this house. And, you know, I see a lot of my uh, neighbors in my neighborhood, they're just bailing. And we have a few houses that foreclosed on and, you know, not like they lost their jobs or anything. What, uh, what kind of protection does the state of California give us if we decide to just walk away? Well, I'm not an attorney, but what do you mean by protection? I mean, what happens if you uh, walk away from the house is you'll be foreclosed. It will go on your credit record for I don't know how many years. It will make credit more expensive for you if you can get it at all. Well, what about the uh, 300K that's upside down? Because I'm sure the banks will short sell it. You know, they'll they'll get their money somehow, some some way at some point. But well, that's a question house, for your attorney if you're planning on doing that. By the way, um, isn't living in it an option? It is an option. We need a place to live. But I tell you what, I could I could buy the exact same house in 18 months from now, even upgraded, bigger, better, for you know a quarter of a million less. Yeah, but the, the point is, you first have to sell this house to buy that one. Uh, well. You know, the, the, the credit repair is not that hard. It takes That's like all years. these people who call up and go, well, you know, the price of gas is $4 a gallon. I've got an SUV and i got to sell it because i got to get a smaller car. But then when I get a smaller car, nobody wants to buy my SUV and I'm in over my head with my car. And I don't know if I will. It's like, come on. Yeah, uh, I, I, I totally understand. Just stay where you are. Stop making life more complicated. And it's going to get more complicated. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. We, um... You know, we, we need a house to live in, but it's, it's frustrating because, you know, I got people that I know have bought, in, you know, a house that was two million bucks, you know, three years ago, and they're buying it for, for 950 to 1.1. Guess what, dude? You bought too soon. I, <laughs> you know, you bought, yeah, the time to buy things is when everyone else is selling. <laughs> like now. Yeah. Not when everyone else is buying. Right. Understood. Understood. All right. You see, anybody who buys, it doesn't matter if it's stocks or Starbucks coffee or real estate. If you buy what everybody else is buying, you pay the highest possible price. That's true. If you buy what nobody wants it, you pay the lowest price. Yeah, you know, hindsight's a, a crazy thing. When we bought yeah, but you house. need to think ahead. Why, if everybody else is buying at the same time you are, what makes you think you're getting a good price on anything? Yeah, it's true. No, I mean, yeah, it's, it, you know, living below your means is, is tough for, for us. And Why is that tough for you? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, I didn't call it a game. I just want to. No, but you just said it's tough for you. Why? Yeah, it's just, it's just frustrating knowing that, that you're paying, paying, you know, $4,000 a month on a house that, that you could. Well, you're paying for your mistake, a mistake that you made. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my my wife says, let's hold on to it. Eight nine years down the road, we'll we'll be happy you did, and, and that's just kind of how we're how we're, you know, just throwing some some conviction in there and knowing that 
you know, seven, eight years from now, we'll be better off. Well, uh, guess what? You should try. Obviously, you should try to keep your uh, interest payments as low as necessary. And then uh, you, I see on the screen here you got five kids and you're married. That's right. That's well, right. It's, it's, pal, it's, it's, why don't you just say we're in this for the long haul. We're a family. We live in this house. We picked this house and this street because we love it. The kids are in a great school. Well, this is where we live. Why can't you just do that? What's your uh, what, what, What's your take on uh, contacting mortgage lenders and trying to get them to reduce? Um, cause I, I know well, you can try. I don't know what their incentive is, on, unless you're about to leave. No, no, we're we're all caught up. It's just you know, I always have this in the back of my mind. You know, if they're if they're desperate, and I'm sure they are, because of all the foreclosures that are going on. You know, doing some type of modification and dropping the the loan balance or dropping the payments down. It's just you know. Well, uh, dropping the loan down. I, I, what's their incentive to do that? Well, it's, you're uh, not unemployed or anything. It's not like you can't pay. You can pay. You've been paid. Yeah. yeah. Now you just don't choose to pay because you see other people paying less. Yeah, it, it is frustrating, you know, because people are getting really good deals right now. and you know, it's, uh, Yeah, but yeah. That, who, that, that's your fault, and now you're paying for it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And hopefully like the next else. time you Big buy out. anything, you'll buy it when no one else wants it. Yeah. Instead of when everybody else wants it. Yeah, that's true. I mean, remember, remember there were certain SUVs you couldn't even get them? You, you had to be on a waiting list for six months? Oh, yeah. I, I, I do but remember I'll tell that. you what, we, if you uh, if you want an Eddie Bauer Explorer, I'll bet you can get one today. Oh, for, for, for eight grand. Almost brand new. <laughs> well, that's my point. You, you want to buy things when no one wants them. Yeah. Not when everyone wants them. All right, Tom. Thank you very much. Uh, we're we're going to follow your advice, and we're going we're gonna to hold on and just, just stay put. You, know you want to blow me up? Here you go, JT. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to... Look at this. My goodness. Let's say hello to Dion on the Tom Likas show. <laughs> Hi, Tom. Hi, Dion. How are you doing? Doing okay. I love you. Let's just start there. You know, one thing I want to bring up is that, you know, I was talking to my friend about uh, this whole bilingual deal. Now, we've allowed being bilingual, okay, we tell our kids, it's good to be bilingual. You can work, you can almost get any job if you're bilingual. But now that a, when a Spanish person is in management, I will start with Del Taco, Taco Bell, and El Pollo Loco. They are not hiring our young American youth. They're only hiring Spanish and a little wait, bit. Wait, 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 wait. Spanish. First of all, there's nobody from Spain working at El Pollo Loco. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> Mexicans. <laughs> I don't like saying that. Nobody from Spain is working at El Pollo Loco. And secondly, are you alleging that they are hiring only people who speak Spanish? Are you alleging that they are hiring illegal aliens? What are you alleging? I'm alleging that there's no other race that's working in El Pollo Locos other than the Mexican race. That I've noticed. The Mexican race. Yes, that oh. I've noticed. So you've tried to get a job, and they said, I'm sorry, you're black, so we're not hiring you in El Pollo Loco. Did they a say that? About seven of my daughter's friends have tried, and they didn't say that, but they're not hiring. And if you go there, you'll see that there's none there. Well, they're not hiring, and they're not hiring African Americans are two different things. Because right now, with the economy the way it is, I'll bet very few people are hiring. Well, this was just like a, a, a topic I'm bringing up, not for these issues that's going on today. But basically, my point was just the bilingual. My guess, if you're willing to work for $8 an hour, Del Taco will hire you tomorrow. <laughs> that's what you think. But the, the Hispanic woman has taken over that position, and she's holding on to it like an old woman at a slot machine. <laughs> Trust me when I say. Look at you. <laughs> You're talking like not, a one-armed bandit, for God's sake. No, say. no, but I'm, I don't want to come off like I'm a racist or anything. But what I'm saying is... Of course you that, don't. <laughs> listen, Tom, come on, baby. Look, <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Okay, it's okay if if we're all bilingual and, and, and okay, it's good. But I'm here in America. I shouldn't be forced to be bilingual in order to just get this mediocre job. 
Well, you don't have to. Look, if you think it's a mediocre job, why apply for it? No, I'm talking about our teenagers. Our teenagers are not, they're not giving them to them. I ha I, okay, I, I went to McDonald's the same particular day my daughter and a couple of her friends went to this job fair. And I, and you know, she was like, well, you know, it was a lot going on, blah, blah, blah. Now, my daughter, she had some positive reviews, but some of her friends didn't. But that's not the issue. The issue is this. I want to know why is it that we accepted it to the point where now we have to be more bilingual than just a little bit of Spanish. Because when you go to the... the, the, the uh, Well, you know, there uh, are other jobs. Well, 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 for the teenagers is what I'm talking about. Not me as a woman. I'm a nurse. No, no, I understand, but there are other jobs. I know that there's other jobs, but why is it that only McDonald's and 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 Del Taco, no, not even Del Taco anymore. Church's Chicken. Uh, uh, <laughs> some of these other. I mean, come on now. It needs to be fair. Burger King, In and Out. You know, this Caucasian girl. She told me this is the only place that would actually hire me. I had problems trying to get me a job. Uh, Del Taco wouldn't hire me. She says Taco <laughs> Bell wouldn't hire me. She says. Uh, uh, where is she? Said she says I went to El Pollo Loco. They wouldn't hire me. I says, Oh yeah, I know they're not going to hire you there. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, we did let you have your say, Dion. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Joe, the Tom Likes Show.